guys in this video i'm going to discuss all my potential racket switches and talk about what it is i like about them and how they specifically match my play style and ideally what i'm looking for in a racket this is a bit of an unstructured video which is different to my normal format so i'm just going to be as efficient as i can and talk about each racket's pros and cons and how they suit me make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content or if you want to support the channel you can buy me a coffee or give me a super thanks follow me on instagram for more updates let's get straight into it Everyone is looking for a perfect racket and the chances are that you'll never find it. But here is a list of what I'm seeking from a frame that suits my needs. Realistically, there are going to be some trade-offs, but this is what the perfect racket would look like for me. For me to consider a legitimate switch, I need something that suits my serve style that's whippy and aerodynamic for maximum racket head speed on the serve. I also need these characteristics to carry over in a similar capacity for both my ground strokes. The forehand I need to be able to have enough maneuverability to whip it and also take a full form cut at the ball. When dealing with the backhand being a one hander I don't want something that is too thick or oddly shaped to hold. Ideally I would want something that's a little bit more squared off at the throat so not something so much like the Aero VS but at the end of the day this could be overlooked if the racket provided what I needed. It needs to have a solid level of control for my aggressive playstyle, which I can go all out, but still make more of my bigger shots than I miss on full swings. It needs to be light, but also stable enough to cover up my really bad defense and returning ability. I need ample spin potential, nothing crazy, but the more the better, but not to the point that it takes away from the flat driving ball that is my main weapon. Most importantly, I want a racket that is as powerful as possible without a massive sacrifice to control, so I can put away the ball against really high level competition. And for a feel, I prefer a good amount of ball pocketing, something that's soft and comfortable, that's not too crisp and direct off the string bit. For the Gravity Pro, the Gravity Pro is my main racket of choice and has been since 2019. After testing dozens and dozens of rackets, I still come back to the Gravity Pros with my key specs at 332 grams static weight, 332 swing weight, and around 6 points headlight balance. I have two near identical specs Gravity Pros, both in the original paint job and the new paint job, but they play slightly different. That is due to the weight distribution that it has towards the 3 and 9 position that is naturally built in within the racket composition itself. The twist weight on my my old Gravity Pro measures in the low to mid 14s which is solid whereas the new one measures in at 12.8 which can be considered very low. The new one swings a little faster as it is under spec and I can use any combination of normal strings in it whilst maintaining my max preferred swing weight. Thus I can generate a higher launch angle and more spin potential by using a full sharp or shaped string. It swings both my one handed backhand and forehand very well and naturally suits my swing path completely and my forehand does alter depending on the weight and shape of the racket and I have to experiment to find the right swing with some rackets. But I'm always immediately feeling right at home with my Gravity Pro being my my main racket. I see many comments regarding the Gravity Pro's power being on the low end, which is just not true at all. Next to the Pure Strike Gen 3, it provides me the second biggest ball out of all my potential racket contenders, and if you know how to swing it properly, it is a true monstrous weapon. Thing is, with the 1820 pattern, you still get the super pinpoint accuracy, even with this kind of power level, it still holds up when you take your biggest swipes at the ball. The one that I have under the old pen job, which is my original and first one, does play quite similar, but there is more stability to it, and that's because it does does come in a bit of a higher swing weight in its natural stock form so I compensate that by using a thin gauge poly to reduce the swing weight and this way it manages to fall back down towards my specs that I listed earlier. My biggest weakness with the gravity is that although it's a great serving racket it doesn't suit my service motion very well which I can generate 80% of my power with just my hand speed alone and for me I have to switch up my technique just for it to suit the gravity and then it becomes less reliable and effective because it's not my natural motion. It also can be tiring to use for long periods but with my specs I find it manageable just enough. But if I have to play someone who hits very high pace and takes a lot of time away from me then my one hander pays the price for it because I'm not going to be able to set up as fast due to the slight clunkiness which forces me to revert to my slice a lot more. What I truly like about the gravity is that my forehand is probably at its peak level when I use it and I can do a full stroke but still have enough speed where I can also whip or slap the ball as well. So I can produce any variety of shot types as well as receive any type. 
The feel is second to none for me and I have not found something that I quite like just as much as the Gravity due to its combination of pocketing, flex, comfort and plow feet at only a 332 gram static weight range. Maybe the new paint job and the Oxetic is enough to keep me from shying away from it next year but I'm hearing that the Gravity Pro as it is in its current form is being discontinued and it will move forward with what is the MP and the Tool mold which I think is a subpar model in comparison. I don't know if this rumor is true or not, I have heard it from someone who's quite a reliable source but I have not heard this rumor from anyone else so I guess we'll see. But that being said, if they do get the specs right for the weight balance and swing weight, maybe this might be the extra balance of power and control that I'm looking for but at the end of the day the tour model just didn't do it for me because it was more head heavy and to get it to a headlight spec it would actually mean that it would be a higher static weight than my Pro and that defeated the whole purpose of having it as an option. The second option on my list is the Pure Strike Gen 3 16x19. This racket has served me well for many years as a backup to my main racket and I consider this to be the most powerful 98 square inch racket on the market and has helped me contend with some of my toughest opponents in tournament settings. The main thing I like about it is that it provides massive put away power with both full strokes and a flick of the wrist. It provides me the heaviest ball that I can possibly hit with any racket that is suitable for my swing style where the racket is not too thick to the point where it becomes not as maneuverable because I rely heavily on racket head speed. It also does serve a mean ball with all serve variations and volleys quite well overall. Although it's not the fastest racket out there especially for my one-hander it does get the job done because it has great spin and power potential to make up for it where I can use a more efficient swing and still generate a lot of pace. The biggest downsides to this racket is that I've actually sold and rebought this racket on about three different occasions now and I have not had the luck to be able to find one with the pre-measured swing weight of something of the low to mid 320s apart from the very first one that I ever used. The reason why I sold it initially was because I was having wrist issues at the time not specifically because of the racket but I just had a very very bad wrist and paired with a stiff string in this racket it really exacerbated the problem. Now I only use softer setups and I have absolutely no problems with this racket but I cannot seem to find a swing weight that I want and it's really a make or break for me for this racket. The feel is comfortable enough these days but overly muted and plasticky which is a big downside so I would prefer something a bit better in terms of feel but the playability for my game is just another level. The other problem that I do not like about it is that I cannot gel with the Bavlite squared grip shape. I do prefer more of a Wilson or head T TK82S grip shape which is what they use for the speed and most head rackets these days and simply all the ones that I've bought the swing weight is just too high and I do not need the swing weight to be this high in this racket. At this point I'm not willing to spend the extra money to find a lower swing weight so I'm probably just going to have to wait till the gen 4 version comes out whenever that does to see whether there are some improvements to the feel. There is enough control for the power but paired with a string that loses tension quickly or if it's a hot day and you don't compensate with a higher tension you will start to spray pretty badly. The ESO 98 is definitely also another option that I've considered heavily. It is a great all-round racket with many parts that suit my game. The serve is the biggest no-brainer, E-Zones possibly being one of the best line of serving rackets that have ever been made. And being someone who relies heavily on my serve for free points, it is a huge advantage with how excellent the aerodynamics flow through the air. The same goes for the forehand that I can use a fast whippy swing and generate ample spin potential with this racket, but at the same time it has a great deal of control. Obviously the stability does lack in stock form and personally I need to be careful of how I add weight to the racket. Ultimately despite making something more headlight it does not necessarily have positive effects on maneuverability all the time. If I'm adding additional weight to a racket even just tail weight the bottom line is that I'm still adding weight and there are times where it can be detrimental to my swing and for the E-Zone this is one of the examples because the mid portion of the racket is quite thick. So generally I prefer it in stock form or at most I will do 2 grams each side at 10 and 2 so it also increases the stability of the racket without slowing me down too much and I won't actually counterbalance at all. The downsides for me with the racket is the one-hander. It's not that it's really bad but I prefer more plow and penetration through the ball and I think it's difficult to achieve for free on this racket especially in tough positions for the E-Zone and I find that I tend to kill it a little bit more short than I'd like. I'm also very picky on the feel and because it's overly muted and when using a bit of a stiffer string it shoots off the string bed too fast then it doesn't particularly suit what I want. So for this racket I have to resort to strings like Polytour Pro or something that I mix with tier 1 Ghostwire to increase the ball pocketing which really helps me dial in with the racket a lot more. 
I also find it better to hit a lot more heavier topspin forehands with this racket for consistency and a little harder to flatten out the ball anytime I want, which is a big part of my game that I'm capable of doing with Pure Strike and Gravity Pro. But I continue to leave this as a potential option due to the forehand and the serve being my two biggest weapons with plenty of racket head speed available. Obviously, if you've seen my review on the Regna 98, I gave it quite a high rating. The biggest problem is obviously the cost, and it's far too much for my liking, but nonetheless an amazing racket if I turn a blind eye to it. Unlike the E-Zone, it has much better capabilities on the one-hander, with the thin beam flowing through the air really fast, and plenty of spin for both forehand and backhand. The serve I think I slightly prefer on the E-Zone 98, but the Regna is a close secondary option, and I do think it does a far better kick serve. I also do enjoy this swing weight in the mid 320s with the level of stability that it holds for blocking returns and defending other balls. The feel is much more up my alley and something that I'm more accustomed to on the Regna compared to the Strike in the E-Zone. I think ultimately what holds me from switching to the Regna is that I would like something with that extra special put away power that I can generate from my Strike Gravity Pro. The Regna is capable of hitting a good pace ball but when I really want that extra edge against the better players I find that when I start going for the big shots on my Regna I I overcompensate because it lacks that 5-10% of extra power and makes me force my stroke a little bit more causing me to make more errors and at the moment I haven't had enough time with it at high level match play to fully trust its abilities yet. But if I can find that perfect setup of tension that does provide me the right level of control and power then this is another high level contender. Finally, the Pure Strike VS. It might surprise you as a potential switch for me because I didn't rave about it that much. But this is a racket that I can play above my normal weight range, which means I can customize it for a higher level of stability without losing much maneuverability. It does not affect the racket head speed barely at all, as it maintains most of it because it has a thin frame and I can generate maximum speed with my forehand, but also it works just as well on my backhand. Being a 16-20 pattern, there is enough spin potential there to be accessed, and even more if I used a very shaped string. There's plenty of comfort for my liking and because of the maximum racket head speed I can generate enough power closer towards my gravity pro and slightly less than my strike gen 3. But because it's super whippy I am able to serve easier with it for how I want to and last longer periods of time without tiring out. I also find it works really nice on the volleys and makes me want to volley more than I usually would. The biggest downside for the racket is that I find the control could be lacking a bit for the way I like to play and I need something that is a little bit more pinpoint accurate. The feel although I like the comfort is a bit on the fence for me. I do enjoy the pocketing but it definitely pockets the ball for a really long time and for me it can become a little bit of detriment to the accuracy for my personal preference. But I think a stiffer string or something like that would be able to help out to slightly decrease the amount of pockets but it is still quite muted heavily however it's something that I can get over. The feel and control also plays a big part in the amount of control for the serve. I can generally serve quite well with it, but there's something about it that does not make me feel like on a bad day that I can still find my targets. Whereas rackets like the E-Zone and the Regna are almost like mindless serving rackets. That concludes my list of contenders. I've actually left one off this list because I'm going to create its own video for it, the next one coming up. And it is actually my pick for the racket of the year and is one that is closest to my number one contender. So if you're interested in that video, stay tuned as I'll try to get that one out as soon as I can. Let me know in the comments what you think my number one contender and racket of the year is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.